Well, welcome to the channel viewers, uh, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. We're still looking at ancient biblical covert emotional incest. I want to go back to Genesis chapter 3. Thank you for joining me, by the way. The call of Abram. If you look here, it says in Genesis 12, 1, the Lord said to Abraham, leave. Very key word, leave. Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. Mm. Now, there's some advantages here because it was a land in which the Lord was going to show him. But it was built on the element that he had to leave the people that were closest to him. Now, this is an advice. We're just looking at the biblical narrative here and how it carried out and played out for Abram. <clears throat> I remember when I was a new Christian, I saw this and I realized I was too connected to my mother. And I realized from this narrative that if I was really going to try and have a crack at it, I need to make some separations. I need to make some boundaries for me to move forward. And it brings us to that scripture which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will establish your path. Okay. And it says, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family. Okay. Now, this might not be advice for all of you, but for me, I understood what it meant. There has to be some spiritual cords, some umbilical cords cut for you to mature. There's some things you need to leave behind sometimes and just take the punt and allow life to mature you so that you can so that you can progress so that you can find your way come out of your comfortable area come out of where you're resting on your laurels to move forward in life and he says i will make you into a great nation i will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those that treat you with contempt. And all the families on the earth will be blessed through you. Now that's a specific promise given to a specific person. But like the Mosaic Law being a, being a general form of morality for societies, I think this is a general form that can be applied to people at a necessary time in their life where they need to make a move to move forward by cutting some umbilical cords from their parents. I'm sure you can understand what I'm saying. Now, the Lord asked Abraham to go, and Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed, verse 4, but, this is what you've got to be careful of. Some hangers-on went with him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot. <clears throat> I'm not sure where... See, ladies and gentlemen, you have to get rid of the hangers-on. Okay? He took all his wealth, livestock, people, he had taken into his household at Haran and headed for the land of Canaan. As this story unfolds, we'll find that Lot, who was a nephew to Abraham, was going to be nothing but trouble to Abraham. He wasn't a specific part of the D, B, um, See, it was Abraham and Sarah and everything that belonged to them specifically, not nephews. See, what you've got to understand, viewers, look. 
uncles, nephews, nieces, cousins, they're not, yeah, you're related to them, but they're not your core. They're not the core members, members of you. They're not going to pay your rent. They're not going to hopefully sleep with you. They're not going to, you know what I mean? They'll be there for support, I guess, if you need them. They're not specifically part of your family in the terms of your core, main-based marriage. You have to keep people out of your marriage. This is where a lot of people go wrong. They let these hangers on, be it children, cousins, nephews, right? Um, get too involved in their personal business. And they always seem to pop up when you, when you don't want them to. Okay? You've got to be careful of hangers on. It doesn't matter if they're relatives or not. You have to have boundaries around your marriage. Children have to have boundaries. So, um, I don't... Okay, so let's find our next passage. Abram went down to Egypt where he lived as a foreigner. As he approached the border of Egypt, Abraham said to his wife Sarai, Look, you are a very beautiful woman. Now this is insecurity. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife. Let's kill him. Then we can have her. This is paranoid schizophrenia. Now, this is the total opposite way in which you should be thinking. This shows you a tremendous weakness in the masculinity of Abraham. Isn't it interesting? We find a broken um, feminine... This is, a, this, is, this is actually a feminine trait that we're seeing in Abraham's character. This is um, paranoid schizophrenia to boot, right? So please tell them you are my sister... This is lying and deceiving. Then they will spare my life and treat me well because of their interest in you. So he knew that people were going to be interested in his wife. And this happens to a lot of men. But you just don't throw the person to the wind. No, you've got to set up um, integrity around your marriage. And protect the person that you're with. You don't go lying and scheming and making out it's your, your sister and things like this. As a matter of fact, this has the opposite effect. This is actually saying to these people that um, this woman is not spoken for. When she was spoken for. And, and this is a horrible, um, demeaning way to treat somebody that's your wife. And sure enough, when Abraham arrived in Egypt, verse 14, everyone noticed Sarai's beauty. I've taken my girlfriends out and people have noticed their beauty, but the last thing I want is them to think that she's not with me. This person's with me. Stay away. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king. And Sarah was taken into his palace. Oh, see, there you go. Bang, straight away. Who was Abraham interested in? Not in his marriage. This is where I said earlier in another video. Most of the reason, the underlying reasons for covert emotional incest is coming from the men not being men when they should have been in their marriages. You don't just let somebody walk off with your wife. Then Pharaoh gave Abraham many gifts because of her. Well, he prospered out of it, but uh, not for the right reasons. But the Lord sent terrible plagues upon Pharaoh. <clears throat> and this is the message to us that are what, viewing this, that are listening to this. We have to man up in a society that's asking us not to. Okay? Now, I've been in relationships where I've had to contend not with Pharaoh. Well, is it the spirit of Pharaoh that's coming over the sons of these mothers? Is it the spirit of Pharaoh that these mothers are building in their sons through covert emotional incest? Where at first they bring you 
they they accept you everybody accepts you into the family as an outsider and i'm speaking to the people in life whose marriages haven't worked out and they're trying to find um somebody that they can be with that'll be compatible and things will work out relatively smoothly for them you're not going to get complete um peace but enough peace for you to be able to go this is worth it so pharaoh summoned abraham and accused him sharp ladies and gentlemen the first thing that's going to happen to you after the love bombing stage by the woman and her family by the person that you're with and their family is when it all comes down to it and things start going bad and we work out who's who you're going to be accused accused sharply if you don't go into the relationship the way that you should because Abraham's undermined his own relationship his wife has been with Pharaoh so Pharaoh would be having sex with her I'm sorry that I know a lot of you don't want to hear this but this is possibly more probably what's happening what have you done to me he demanded why didn't you tell me she was your wife and that's a good question why didn't Abraham tell him she was his wife because I don't think Abraham's relationship with his parents was what it should have been and he just didn't have the masculinity and the courage and the persona and the acumen and the love for that woman to stand beside her and keep these people away from his marriage why did you say she is my sister and allow me to take her as my wife so she, the pharaoh's been sleeping with her now then here is your wife take her and get her out of here which is interesting because it doesn't say too much for sarah peace is more important ladies and gentlemen and for those that think the grass is greener on the other side it's not peace is more important than the plagues that come the terrible things that happen when you're in affairs and in adultery and swapping and changing and not dealing with things and got unresolved and you end up these women end up with somebody else not by your will usually by their own and they get dropped they get discarded sarah's been discarded abraham had no right to allow this to happen he should have actually put his life on the line to stop it from happening instead right and this is a sign of a feminine unmasculine male <coughs> excuse me he took the gifts verse 16 and everything um instead of protecting his wife uh and so take her and get out of here verse 20 pharaoh ordered some of his men to escort them and he sent abram out of the country along with his wife and all his possessions so pharaoh couldn't have cared less about what he'd given pharaoh or whether he was uh, pharaoh couldn't care less about what he'd given abraham whether he was going to get it back or not he was a man of principle abraham wasn't ladies and gentlemen viewers abram, abram is far from where he should be in his character and personality see he's just left home and completely blown it <clears throat> straight out of leaving home and life starting to shape him life starting to teach him that you cannot and you must not muck people around now the interesting part about this is Sarah stayed with him if you were Sarah would you have gone back to that I don't think so no you would have I would hope be quite angry about that when Abraham left Egypt and traveled north into Negev along with his wife and look the hangers on 
this is this is the underlying problem that you're seeing with Abram. He wasn't completely bonded and bound to his wife. He had all these hangers on for his security. I always find security in the woman that I'm with until she starts falling to bits. Um, or some side out, outside interference starts wrecking things. But Lot, you have to follow the story of Abraham and Lot because Lot became an absolute nightmare for Abraham. He was not supposed to be in this clan. He's just a hanger on, like a lot of these single mothers with their children. They just let them hang on and interfere in everything. Abraham was very rich in livestock, silver and gold from his interaction with Pharaoh and the fact that Pharaoh just wanted to get rid of him. Um, and this is what will happen. This is what happens to people. They fall out with people. And then down here it says, finally, uh, Abraham said to Lot, let's not allow this conflict to come between us and our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want and we will separate. And thank this is when everything starts changing for Abraham. Abraham's starting to develop. He's starting to realize that I've got to make myself exclusive. I've got to make my marriage exclusive. I can't have these hangers on just hanging around my personal space. My life's not about these people. And unfortunately, the single mothers and, and these men and people out there that don't realize this, things fall apart around them because there's too many interferers. Take your choice of any of the section of the land you want and we will separate. Sometimes viewers, and I have to finish here, separation is for the better. We don't want to accept it. We don't want to, we don't want to deal with it. <clears throat> but here we see the incremental progressive steps in the development of Abraham as a man. First leaving his family, his place of origin, um, and going into a foreign land where we see he didn't manage himself or his marriage very well at all. But now we're starting to see him develop as he's deciding to bring separation into and put boundaries around his personal life, separating away from the hangers-on, the relatives and the interferers and the ones that just seem to hang on. And this is what we all need to stop and look at. Many of you are having trouble with children, relatives, um, people that just should not be in the space that they're in in your life. And you need to take stock of what this does to you. A lot of people are finding their emotional security in the wrong things and places. And you need to come back to yourself. I'm telling you the answer, come back to yourself. Put these people where they need to be. Um, put these people in their place too many times I've seen um, and let's bring it back to families as a whole where people have just out of convenience allowed hangers on to be there and in the end it's wore everybody out it's it's reduced prosperity and nothing seems to be in order. People lose their identity, they're over, there's no boundaries, there's no um, order and there's motions spilling over everywhere and just splashing around and nobody is back to themselves, they're just lost. There's drugs, alcohol, all that other stuff contributes to all of this but imagine being straight and not having these life simple life principles in order 
That's why people are losing themselves. They're allowing too many things to pull them away from who they are and what they're supposed to be doing. They're not developing. They're personally and characteristically not maturing. They're not allowing themselves to mature because they're emotionally bonding to things that aren't allowing that to happen. They're relying on things that aren't allowing them to psychologically develop. And this is what covert emotional incest does. <clears throat> when we emotionally attach to things that we're not supposed to be attached to, cars, hobbies, and these kind of things, yeah, they're to be enjoyed. But if our identity is found in these things, just for example, we're not developing. We're not going to be going to our full potential characteristically, intellectually, spiritually, emotionally. We will, we will turn in on ourselves and the people around us. Abraham was told to leave his family of origin, his place of origin, and the Lord would lead him into the place that he was to end up. He took hangers on that he was uh, emotionally um, attached to, which he shouldn't have been. And you'll find that these things became the thorn in his side as we go through this. And we need to set up boundaries, healthy boundaries around the hangers on and the people that are trying to stay undeveloped that we're enabling to not develop, which means we're actually enabling them to be disenabled and we're allowing them to spill over into our personal lives, interfere with our personal lives and it's costing us our personal intimate relationships. We need to be very careful to get this stuff in order. This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Thank you for joining me. And bye for now.